What's cracking, guys? I'm joined none other than with Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, the doc who knows all about hypertrophy. If you want to know about building muscle, Brad's your guy. Brad, can you just give me a brief rundown for the people that don't know who you are, what you do, your competitive experience, everything. Who is Brad Schoenfeld? I thought you were going to ask me if I even lift. Do you even lift? Oh, uh, well, um, that bicep's bigger than his head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I started out as a natural bodybuilder. I won numerous uh, uh, natural bodybuilding shows. Uh, competed for about eight years in, in that realm. Uh, I'm now a professor in exercise science at uh, Lehman College. I also run there. I'm the head of the human performance lab there. I do a lot of research on hypertrophy. And basically, that is my life, is figuring out how to grow muscle. Well, and that's why, just name for us, cite off some of the you know, papers that you recently have published. I have 50 peer-reviewed publications. My uh, last one, the one that's been quite popular now, is Bodybuilding versus Powerlifting in Journal of Strength and Condition Research, where I looked at the effects of a bodybuilding routine versus a powerlifting routine on strength and hypertrophy. I just published a, uh, a review on, into, on uh, the interest set uh, rest intervals. I have made analyses on protein timing, on nutrient timing. I have the, another one that just got accepted on meal frequency. So I do a lot with nutrition as well as uh, BFFs, man, with who? Alan Aragon. Alan Aragon, my main man, and Brett Contreras, too. That's why I want to say. Him another month. <laughs> man, if you're interested in building muscle, Brad is your guy. There is no one else who has done as much research that's able to break it down so succinctly and effectively. I find Percy, so Brad is one of my heroes. I'm interviewing him today all about building muscle. We're just gonna dive right into it. Let's go, man. So let's talk about the study that you did, powerlifting versus hypertrophy, right? Pure hypertrophy training. What did the study show? Because some people will ask the question essentially and they'll frame it like this. Can you gain as much muscle doing a powerlifting program for say a traditional, more hypertrophy oriented training program? So what you know, what was the study? What did it show? What were some of the limiting factors? Yeah, basically the study was designed so we looked at a, a routine that was going to have a lot of mechanical tension, which is a powerlifting type routine, heavy weights, longer rest intervals, uh, total body routine, so there's not uh, not going to be a lot of metabolic stress. And the bodybuilding routine was designed to maximize metabolic stress, where we're going to have uh, your bro type split, chest, back, and, and leg type split. Uh, it's going to be shorter rest intervals, 90 seconds, and it was uh, 10 reps. Uh, whereas the powerlifting was three reps. We equated the volume load, so basically the amount of the total load that they lifted was the same uh, between the groups and after eight weeks, we did an eight-week study. Really no differences in the hypertrophy of the bicep break eye, the arm flexors. And by the way, some people, it's kind of funny, have questioned the fact that uh, we didn't do direct, when you say direct, we didn't do uh, bicep curls. Uh, anyone that doesn't think that um, lat pull-downs and seated rows produce significant biceps hypertrophy just aren't paying attention. Right. Uh, if, if you look at the movement, there's a lot of elbow flexion, and actually there's studies showing that there's really not much difference in adding uh, isolated movements, uh, single joint movements. So, That's anyway, something we'll touch on. Uh, but we did find really no differences between um, hypertrophy. However, there was a slight improvement, uh, a slight increase in improvement for the strength-related group, the powerlifting group versus the bodybuilding group. Now, the, the caveat here... There's several, because people yeah. would be saying, that they heard what you just said, whoa, 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 just, so a guy did a strength program, another one did a hypertrophy training program, they got the same results, so what? I should just stick to it? What are, what are some of the problems here? In order to account for the equation of, of volume, and volume, by the way, is a huge driver of hypertrophy. There is a dose-dependent relationship between hypertrophy and training volume, meaning that the more you trained or up to a certain point, the right. more volume you have, the greater the hyper, uh, hypertrophic response. Well, it took 70 minutes to complete the powerlifting routine. It took 17 minutes to complete the bodybuilding routine. That's a huge difference. So it's huge. And not only that, at the end of the uh, pro at the end of the protocol, what we found was that two of the subjects got injured uh, from the powerlifting routine, just too much grinding. And even those, the eight subjects that completed the study were all toast by the end of the study. They're, Basically, they're, they're they, they were at the point of overtraining, yep. Right. Whereas the group that was uh, in the bodybuilding routine was ready to go for more volume. So, so the take home message here is that because this, of this relationship between volume and hypertrophy, the general protocol for a 6 to 12 rep bodybuilding style routine does hold true because right. it allows you to generate the volume needed 
to maximize the hypertrophic response. But you should be including some low rep sets in there to maximize the strength gains, which can transfer over to hypertrophy. And also some of the new recent research that I'm doing shows a benefit to doing very high reps as well. Uh, so I, I do have a study in review right now that shows that there might be benefits to type one fiber hypertrophy from doing 20 plus reps too, sets that have high reps. That is on a roll here. Did not stutter once. Bad. That was awesome. When it, so what would you say to those individuals looking to maximize both? Would you say you can essentially maximize both pure strength and then as well pure hypertrophy? You have to make a choice or some sort of compromise? Yeah. There's no such thing as, as having, your, having your cake and eating it. So basically you do need to, to look at what your goal is. It's the principle of specificity. So if you want to maximize strength, you want to do more of a powerlifting routine. If you want to maximize hypertrophy, the volume aspect is going to require that you're going to have somewhat higher repetitions. But it is not a binary decision like I said including right. a spectrum of rep ranges really is important for maximizing that response. Brad let's dive right into that so the number one question people want to know is Dr. Schoenfeld. Dr. Broenfeld what's the ideal rep range for building muscle? Everyone heard what three times ten can you comment a little bit and some people say like why would you even train for strength in order to build muscle and other people say higher rep ranges don't work. Can you just break it down what are the ideal rep ranges what should you do? There's no such thing as an ideal rep range like I said the volume and hypertrophy the dose dependent relationship is extremely important so we want to drive it through increased volume. There are also beyond a certain threshold say 12-15 reps of uh, general of traditional style lifting, you can. There is suggestions that recruitment will be more towards favoring type one fiber development sure. versus type two, but within a very general range. Within that range, training across the spectrum. As long as you can drive the volume up to the given point, that's really the essential factor, and that you're going to have to do through a periodized approach anyway, because you, you can't consistently train at high volumes without becoming overtrained. So doing some type of periodization. And by the way, I'll say on the other side, while the powerlifting group in my study showed somewhat greater. Uh, strength gains, it was not hugely different. So right. it was significantly different, meaning there was the uh, probability, statistically, meaning that the probability of chance was not was less than 5% uh, probability of chance right. occurring. But the overall absolute numbers show you still have incredible increases in strength through a hypertrophy type protocol. And then let me just touch upon what you just said. Why would you even do then higher rep ranges? You said something about buffering. Can you comment a little bit sure. on that? Why is it included? How do you see it or how do you include these different rep ranges in a traditional program then? Yeah, two, two real reasons. Number one, like I said, there is suggestion that it increases the uh, hypertrophy of type 1 fibers, which can tend to be neglected in heavier strength training, and, and certainly they do contribute to the hypertrophic response. And the other thing is that when you train with higher repetitions, it does promote lactate buffering, lactic acid buffering, so that it raises your lactate threshold, and that can potentially allow you to get an extra rep or two at a given rep range, and thus drive a greater hypertrophic response. The greater the volume within a given uh, range that you're pushing through, right. at least theoretically, can increase your hypertrophic potential.